everybody who's here virtually. Glad you joined us. Welcome to all of you guys to our continuing First Wednesday speaker series. We had a great speaker to start us off. I know it's just going to get better now because I've heard Ramon speak. I'm not going to spend much time, time with this at all, introducing them. You guys have already seen what I put out there in the email. I'm just going to say this. Our CRM, your database, is where the lion's share of your business comes from. It's the low-hanging fruit, but I don't like that term. It sounds, it's the most important people we know, and it's where most of our business should come from. And if I'm doing a great job as a coach, you might be approaching a 10% conversion, meaning for every 100 people, you're doing 10 transactions. I started speaking with this man, and he's telling me his transactions this year, and how many from his sphere, and how much GCI he's gonna do, and I did the quick math I do on my head and said, wait a minute, that's way over 10%. And he very calmly looks at me like I'm an idiot and goes, well, yeah, it's over 15. I tend to keep it over 15. Like, well, what are you doing? How are you doing this? Wait, never mind. Don't tell me. Come tell everybody. <laughs> so this is Ramon Maldonado. We're so glad you're here. Hi. Nice to see everybody. You know, I, like you said, 10% is really good from your SOI. Um, I keep things very, very simple. Um, anybody on my team that you talk to, all I say is keep it simple because, I mean, they'll go and show me stuff that they're sending out to their clients and, oh, their logo or specific writing, this and that. I'm like, people don't care. They just want to see your face. You know, it's all about keeping things simple. I've seen agents take 20, 30 minutes to look over a card to make sure that the card was right. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's not gonna be the reason why somebody calls you and, and wants to communicate with you and talk to you about real estate, especially your SOI. Um, I have this up here for the meeting. It's Austin. something, oh, it's not there anymore? Okay, let me see. I stand up like I can do anything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Opposite of Tech. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me get, oh, okay. So it's actually something, an email Robert Refkin sent out. And it, it hit home. I mean, I've been doing what I've been doing for almost 10 years now with my sphere. Um, but the three bullets that he said um, that hit me is people want to work with those um, who they connect with on a human level. So, you know, a lot of coaches, I think they teach um, asking for the business when you call. I never ask for the business when I call my SOI. They know what I do. You know, I'm calling them on a human level, see how the family's doing, see how the dogs are doing. Um, I write notes every time I talk to them to just kind of go based on what my last conversation was to roll it into the next conversation. Uh, more than 80% of agents' business come from repeat and referral clients. Um, my business is, this year it's there. Um, typically, I don't want it to be there. Um, I go out there and I chase a lot of my, my business um, I, I try to keep it at like 50-60% because then I know I'm throwing in new clients to my database all the time every year and I'm not depending on my sphere to do that. So not saying that it's wrong that you do it the other way around, it's actually a great business model. Sometimes it's a lot stressful than what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, the last one is relationships are built on communication. Um, if your past clients never hear from their agent, they often assume they're too busy, not available, or no longer in the business. It's, it's absolutely the most truthful thing um, I've read because I have a lot of agent friends, I mean, we all do, we're in the business, that call and complain to me and say, oh, that client and I helped them sell or buy a few years ago ended up doing business with somebody else. Ask them, when's the last time you talked to them? Oh, when we closed escrow. Well, how do you expect them to come back to you when you haven't been something consistent in their life? It was basically a turn and burn for them. That's how I would have felt. You know, I think that's how we all would have felt. Um, everybody knows a real estate agent, so you need to be, it's, you need to be top of mind, um, especially within these last two and a half years. 
how many more people have gotten their real estate license. I know even more than I've ever known. They're in every circle. Um, I actually got a referral from uh, one of my clients the other day and I sat down and I had to interview for it and it was a referral because two of their cousins got their license and they wanted to help them out. So I actually had to explain to them why I was a better fit for them moving forward. Uh, without disrespecting the family member, you gotta be very careful with that stuff. So it's a slippery slope. Um, so I, obviously I use the Compass CRM and I'm gonna go over just kind of what I do monthly, quarterly, yearly. Um, and what I do at the end of every transaction with the process uh, with my clients. So monthly, I email the clients. Um, email clients, listings that are coming up, possible, well, it says possible listings, but listings that are coming up. Um, but most of the times the emails, happy Valentine's Day, happy Father's Day. They're super basic, super generic. Um, I've learned if they do open up the email, they're not gonna sit in the email very long and lead read your detailed information about every little thing that's going on. Um, the other thing I've learned is majority of them just delete the email. Um, and that's okay. I just want them to see my name. It, I, I don't care. I don't get personal. There's not something special you're going to put in there that's going to make them call you. They're your past client. They just want to see your name. So they can be like, Oh, you know, actually somebody at work, let me call, you know, was looking to buy or sell, let me call Ramon. Uh, or let me pass Ramon's information along. Uh, the other thing I do is every single quarter, I call every single past client that I've done business with, that I've kept in my sphere. Since I got into this business 10 years ago, it used to take me 10 minutes to call my past clients. Now it takes me a full month. So I at the end of every quarter I divide 25 days by the amount of people that are in my past clients right now there's 223 some something like that you know I delete people some people just you know it didn't work out you know not everybody's gonna love you at the end um, or you don't love them so it goes both ways what do you say to your clients when you're calling quarterly just checking in, how you doing, mm -hmm. you know, how's life? What I've realized every quarter is something major happens in a few of my clients' life within that quarter. So that's the time where I'm getting those referrals, um, getting those listings. I mean, I had a client that I called every quarter for years. I'm never gonna sell this house. And I'm like, no, I'm calling you to say hi. I truly like you. But what happened in the beginning of the year, her and her wife ended up getting divorced. So I sold that house and I helped both of them buy a property. So just because I called and I was top of mind, I got three deals out of that whole situation. How, how often do you keep up on social media before you make your calls so that you know what's really going on in your life? I don't really keep up with social media. Okay. Um, I don't really spend very much time on my social media. I'll be honest with you, I don't, it, it's an incredible way to get business. Just has never been the way that I built business. If you look at my social media page, you'll see a lot of generic stuff, just listed, just sold. That's not me doing it. I pay somebody to do that stuff for me. Um, I'm kind of like the old school, grind it out type of deal. Um, but I think social media is amazing. I, I know at some point I probably should add it to my business and make it a, a thing. But right now, I, I guess I'm very comfortable with how I'm doing my business. Do you front load your holiday um, e email that you send out, or do you do a card for the holidays to your sphere? So, um, and it's on here. So the yearly holiday card to clients, I mail it out every yeah. December. Okay. Yeah. So for I try to get it out the first week of December. Okay. Um, so monthly emails to clients, quarterly calls every quarter, and then every year I drop a holiday card. Okay. You know, I. I what I've noticed, you know, I have a two-year-old now, so uh, the reason I say that is I started using him as leverage in these cards. <laughs> but what I've realized is I should have been doing that way before. Even if it was me, my wife, and our two cats, <laughs> like, just do it. Um, one of the agents on my team, it's always him and his wife, and they send it out and he sees a lot of good traction from it. 
Uh, so it's a family holiday card? Like it's a... My a family holiday card for Christmas or the holidays. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm also calling them during that time, too. I've got to hear emails. Yeah. Uh, monthly emails. Are, are they bulk emails? I mean, you send the same email to, to everybody. Company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I try not to complicate that process, and I'm using the Compass CRM for all that yeah. stuff. So you, know? you use templates? Yeah, I use their basic templates. Uh, some of their basic templates. I mean, they have some very uh, great templates in there. So, where is it? I mean, you'll see some of my most recent designs still up there. Yeah. I mean, 4th of July. Um, clicked on it. So 4th of July, best of ROI, Easter, Happy Mother's Day. I mean, super generic stuff that I use. You don't set it up for the time to, to go out. You just I don't, because do yeah. usually I try to do the holiday stuff. So, and sometimes it takes Compass a little bit to get those current holiday stuff. Or I'll email the marketing person and say, hey, can you do this marketing? What you'll see as a reminder, um, is that like on the fifth you'll see set up emails to clients so I have it set up in my email on the first I deleted it but on the first you'll see uh, market update because I started throwing farming into what I do so I have that stuff continuously on my emails of things to remind me to do all the time um, if you're not using your calendar to get some of this stuff done I mean biggest mistake I, I I'm actually kind of blown away the amount of agents that don't use their calendar and connect it to their phones so that they're on the same page. If you look at my calendar right here, I mean, there's just tons and tons of things. It gives me anxiety to look at. <laughs> um, sometimes it gives me so much anxiety. If you see on the first right here, that also was supposed to, there, there was a market update there, but because I didn't want to look at it anymore, I just deleted it. So there's some stuff I just delete. Um, so. I mean, definitely use. Do you use a video in your email ever? I don't. Okay. I don't, but it, and it's a great tool. So just because I don't use it doesn't mean it doesn't work good for you and what you're doing. Um, you know, sometimes teaching an old, old dog new tricks is really hard, <laughs> you know, and that's even for myself. Um, I haven't been, I guess, on camera enough to make myself feel comfortable. So I think some of it's a confidence thing. <laughs> Almost, oh, you know, 35. <laughs> but I appreciate the compliment. I'll keep taking that as long as I can. Because uh, I hear it changes really quick. <laughs> uh, but, you know, every day though, I do, what I do like putting the CRM or putting the clients in the Compass CRM is I always view the recommendations. I actually kept this recommendation in here. Um, Dr. Gloria Harris. It's actually somebody we just listed. Um, the reason I kept her in there is because I knew the the um, the AI is crazy with Compass, but it even helped us with this with this specific lead that I had. That how much she was looking through stuff, how active she was being, that I stayed on top of her even more. So now I'm actually starting the process with some of my leads or with all my leads is start putting them into Compass because it will tell me what they're up to. Um, so because of this, it ended up helping us list the property. So, you know, and, and the recommendations, there's a reason why they're there. Some of it, you know, could just them playing around on Zillow or some of these sites they're not going to sell anytime soon, but I've had recommendations there where I'm like, oh shoot, I'll call him real quick. And it's in between that like three month period and a listing has come out of it. I've probably gone like four or five just out of doing that. What do you say? The, the system says, hey, this person's uh, likely to sell. You call them and say what? Just checking in. How you doing? How's the condo? How's the house? How's the dog? So kind of a similar conversation. I'm not going to... Uh, creep them out <laughs> with how cool our systems are. Um, it's just, for me, it's just all personal. 
most of my clients, the way I do business, I, for most people, I've built my business strictly off cold calling. I, I didn't do anything else. I tried open houses, didn't work for me. You know, and that's a whole nother conversation and meeting, but um, so most of my interactions early on with my clients were just selling them on me, and, and some of them were very difficult people at the time, but now they love me, and they're different conversations now. Uh, but it's always for me just about checking in. Once I've broken down that wall, you know, it's, it's a different type of thing. Um, I've also added, especially with some of my really good clients, I try to take out one client a month to dinner. Some of them I'll bring them over to my house. Some of them I go to their house. Um, most of my clients are older than me. You, you know, I mean, this is not old, but 50, 60 above, you know? So a lot of them look at me as their child, to be honest with you, their kid. So, um, but I, I'll take them to dinner, so. Do you try, are you strategic with who you kind of go belly to belly with? Or is it just? It just depends on the conversations I'm having on the phone, who picks up my phone. So I call every quarter. Doesn't mean I talk to everybody every quarter. I wouldn't, it would take me more than 30 days to talk to everybody if I got everybody on the phone. So don't take it personal if it takes years after that transaction for that person to finally pick up the phone. It's them just seeing your name. It's the same thing with the email. It's them just seeing your name. Um, in 10 years, I probably had three clients go somewhere else and they use like a Redfin type of company. So they were just strictly chasing the lowest commission. Only three of your three. clients have Gone cheated somewhere. on you? Yeah. Wow. In 10 years. <laughs> so You just had one that was seven years, seven without answering? Yeah, yeah. Tell so, them that I mean, <laughs> just calling them a lot. Stop you know, it. just saying hi. Yeah, just checking in, leaving them a voicemail though. Every time I call, I do leave a voicemail. Hey, just checking in. Love to touch base. Let's chat. You know, call me when you get a second. So seven years of that, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, I guess on the seventh year, you know, they needed to do some, some real estate and they called me. I know I've been getting your calls and your emails for a long time. We haven't connected, but you know, you're my guy. I actually need to do some stuff. And you know, I actually did two transactions with them. Um, Lucky number seven. Yeah, yeah. So again, it goes back to not making it complicated so I, I just put all my contacts into the compass CRM and I let it do its thing you don't really need to do a ton with it I know there's a ton you can do with it but I'm not doing a ton with it compass has a lot of stuff but I'm using anytime I have it, agents ask me about compass and they end up coming over I tell them use the things that you're already using right or already doing but the thing is, is Compass has everything in one spot for you, so you don't need to remember seven passwords, username and passwords, because that's what I was doing. Just coming over to Compass, I was spending like $1,200, $1,200 in systems a month, and we had to go to all these different systems where they're doing it all here. Um, I remember it would take me 30 to 45 minutes to put an email template together because the system I was using didn't have just the holiday templates for me, so I'd have to copy paste and figure out some you know wording to throw in there where it's already there don't have to think much compass does all the thinking for you curious outside of this you said you still are chasing business you're always trying to add people to your database yeah what particular areas do you like what are what do you specialize in? um cold calling so there's i've always been taught there's three pillars to the business there's the business you work for, the business you pay for, and your SOI. Those are your three pillars. Um, the business I chase, I use cold calling. That's just what I've been doing. But open houses work, door knocking works. Um, anything you don't have to pay for works. Doing um, events, we were just talking about that, doing events in the community. Um, and then I have business that I pay for, which is now I farm, and I farm about 5,000 properties a month. I don't do a ton of business through it. I mean, mailers? Yeah, mailing. So like, I probably do, I think the most I did in a year was 10 transactions. What system do you use to do your postcards for mail? Um, I have a, a printer and a designer that work together. 
Uh, I mean, I can give you all that information. I'm just curious, because uh, we're doing, what are, you, what are we doing? The post we're doing, office. We're doing the same thing. We're doing <laughs> he takes it to the post office. EMMD? Yeah. Like the yeah. direct mail drop. EDDM. Yeah. Uh, EDDM. Yeah. Yeah. EMMD? EMMD? E D D M. Yeah. Um, I don't do E D D M because I always it, it's a little bit more. I want the postcard to go to the person's mailing address in case they have renters. So I'm paying more, but what I've noticed is most of the leads I get are from the people that don't even living at the property. Um, so I and it's really for me it's not that much more. I guess it depends on the, the neighborhood you're in. Uh, I think I spend probably $250 more, but the return on it is way higher doing it that way. Um, it's just a lot. I do like EDDM because you can click on the different things when it comes to streets and then you can start kind of taking over the streets and you know whatever that route is one by one. Um, but like, like we were talking, it doesn't matter as long as we're doing something, right? Like it, as long as something some type of real estate activity you're doing, the business is gonna come out of it. Um, so I, I have a process every time I close a transaction with all my clients. Um, I put them on a spreadsheet, so I'm still kind of old school with it, because it's easy for me to follow up with these people later when I'm calling. Um, so I just have a, a normal spreadsheet with all their information, so I input them in here because I'm able to go, you know, oh, I've called all these people and then I'm done for the day and I can put, you know, start right here. So that it reminds me when I'm getting deeper into it, where to go. Um, it's just kind of how my brain works. And then I put them in Compass's back end and then I add them, there's a lot of the postcard systems, but minted.com is the one I use. I add them in there because at the end of the year, once we take the family picture, we put it in minted.com, we put the addresses on there, and it's all done for me. I, I spent 15 minutes mm -hmm. on that. So it's always the same thing. Which this is, I guess, my minted right here, the back end. So I have 166 contacts, you know, husband, wives, so, so family members, you know, just people on there um, that we send out cards every year to. So you do husbands and wives, do you do them? How do you do them? I do it together. Do it together. Yeah, but I do, when I call them every quarter, I treat it separate. That is if they're separate clients because they both go to different jobs, they both have different friend groups. Um, so you gotta treat them differently. You know, in some relationships, the husband gives me more and others, the wife gives me more because the husband isn't a very social person. So it just kind of depends. <laughs> So I always keep them separate in the system. On the so on the um, yearly mailers, I keep them together. In the Compass CRM, I keep them separate. Mm -hmm. How big is your phone database of the one sixty four cards that you're setting up? Like, how, when you're saying you have an S, you have a return on S of whatever it is, your ROI is fifteen percent of the total database. What's your total database? It is pull it up right now 228 people so these are people this isn't like an open house that you put in from seven all, years ago these are people that you've all my past done clients. business past clients yeah that's it yeah okay that's all that makes sense. yeah and when I say SOI it's not my doctor it's not my dentist it's people who I've strictly done hmm. business with um, not saying that's wrong to do some people I've seen success out of it um, I think that's the great thing about Compass's system. You can tag them and then search that tag and only call those people. Um, so you don't apply this to like uh, potential leads, uh, close family friends? I personally don't. Okay. No, I, and I probably should, but I also, how I do business is different, mm -hmm. right? I, I cold call, so I use a system called Red X, and in my Red X, it almost has its own database in there, or it does have its own database in there where you can tag things, and you know, I have an A lead folder, B lead folder, mm -hmm. C lead folder, so I'm looking at you know, that system differently than the system of call it, you know, keeping on top of my past clients. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I do every time I close escrow is I add them to social media. 
it's lately it's been a huge thing they're the ones that are commenting on all my posts um, you know they're gonna be more of your cheerleaders than your friends and your family you know it's just the honest truth and, you know not, not all my I don't get along with all my family anyway so I don't care <laughs> um, you know so adding them to social media is a it's huge because they're seeing your stuff and I'll get them sharing some of my posts and you know then people are commenting on that so I'll get leads off that without even having to do this video and explain what closing costs are and what the escrow process is like um, it's just them interacting and you know they I'm sharing it just listed that my marketing person did and so they shared it on their page and that's how I ended up getting the lead and that lead turned into a seller you know those are the the leads that kind of fall out of the sky. So I I put here for the last thing I do is request a Zillow review, but it's Zillow, Google review, whatever you do for reviews, do it. I mean, they're going to search you, not everybody, but for the clients that do search you, I probably have like three or four a year that searching, but those are three or four clients. Based on average commission in San Diego right now, it's a lot of money, you know, you're leaving sixty to seventy-five thousand dollars on the table if your average commission is fifteen grand every time. So um, when you're just talking about hey a transaction, you know, three, four, five people, you're like, well, that's not that many people, but when you start breaking down the numbers, it, it really is. Um, so I, I have this process every time I close a client. I got two closings this week, I'm gonna go through this same process. Add them to my spreadsheet, add them to Compass's back end, add them to minted.com, add them to my social media if they have it. I'll try to find them. I'll stalk them if I have to. Um, some of them don't do Facebook, but they're on Instagram. So it's, you know, use, use those two things. And I know some people are like, well, I want my business and my social life to be two separate things. Get out of the business if that's how you feel. Because the second you signed up for real estate, you became a public person to everybody. They can Google you, they can get your cell phone number. If you didn't want that, get out of real estate and make sure everybody deletes everything about you. Um, have you used Ben Verified? I haven't. Oh, that's really good. Okay. If you want to stalk somebody, it's $99 <laughs> or 94 bucks a year. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Emails, phone numbers. So I, my Red X system can, criminal records. <laughs> yeah, my Red X system can actually do a lot of that stuff. It doesn't do emails, but I also don't do a ton of email marketing outside of my sphere. Um, if I was, then I'd get into some of those systems, start pulling emails. Um, it's actually something I've been talking about to do for my farm. Because if they're not getting the postcard, or they're just throwing away the postcard, then, you know, another way to get them is emails. And some people who don't jump on the phone with you every quarter are might be looking at your emails all the time. The, some people who respond to my emails every quarter or every month are the same people that never pick up my calls every quarter. So um, just keep doing it. Don't be offended by the client uh, or don't don't take it personal. People have busy lives. You know, we're talking about kids and, you know, what can happen when you start having a family or you got grandkids and, um, you know, you have a crazy ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, life can get crazy. So um, we have to remember that you just keep doing it over and over and over and over again until they tell you to either, hey, I have a referral for you or I need to buy or sell or, hey, I'm tired of you. I didn't even like you when we closed escrow. Please delete me. So, yeah. What do you do with um, clients who've moved out of state? Uh, we've talked about this. They're some of my highest referral clients. Um, typically, if they've moved out of state, they're trying to talk their friends and family <laughs> to, to moving out of state. So, and follow them out of state. So, they are some of my highest um, referral clients out there. Um, I actually spend more time with them on the phones than I spend with the clients that actually live in San Diego on the phones. Yeah. yeah. Do you set your um, follow up with the closing process as an action plan? And do you actually do all that inputting yourself or does somebody help you with that? Um, somebody, yeah, I'm starting to teach somebody to help me with it. I'm trying to let go, you know, I, I'm let, I let go of a lot of stuff. 
So I, I do not micromanage my business. I have a TC that handles a lot of stuff for me. My marketing person handles stuff for me. So right now the data entry is kind of the one thing that I'm trying to let go. But right now it's kind of like 90% me, 10% them. So I've been doing it so long that it's become a habit. So I don't even need to remind myself. Um, I'll have, I have like a numbers tracker that I have every day for calling or speaking with people. When I have a closing that day, I'll put on the to-do list to add this person. So in some, it's, your calendar. it's not, that is not on my calendar. It's unless I have to go to an appointment or something, then I'll put it in the calendar. <clears throat> Again, that I just created such a habit with it that I haven't needed to. But if you're just starting to do it, then yeah, you need reminders and you know, it was just something I learned from basically the day I got into the business of how to do this stuff and keeping it simple. Like simple, 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 don't make it complicated. That's what I tell my team all the time. Um, follow up, it's almost like a cold lead sometimes. You gotta follow up with them, follow up with them, follow up with them until they get on the phone with you. Because they wanna talk to you. For your numbers tracker, what, yeah. is, what are your daily goals and like how do you keep track? So for cold calling, for me, it's 20 contacts a day. I don't need to meet that any, you know, if you're new to cold calling, you should meet that. Um, 10, 20 real estate contacts a day. You know, on the phones, it's a lot easier to make contacts. Door knocking, it's a lot easier to make contacts, so you kind of have to adjust. Um, then it's like the type of cold calling I'm doing. If I'm calling expireds, canceled, you know, it's 20, but if I'm throwing just listed in there, sometimes it's 30, 35, because those are easier contacts to get. No one's, you know, you don't have 50 realtors calling the same number. Um, you know, I, basically no one on my team calls expired accounts but me. Most of them call just sold, uh, which has been a great thing. And you gotta learn the process about that. As I say that, the prospecting aspect of it is a totally different other training because there is a full process with it, you know, if you jump on the phones and you're calling and, and people hang up on you and it's months before you get something and you give it up, well, you didn't go through the full process of what that type of prospecting takes. Um, open houses, you can get leads a lot quicker. You know, it's door knocking, it, it's, I feel like it's almost similar to the same kind of process of cold calling. Um, but you gotta, it, if you're not using a system like Red X, um, Mojo, um, God, there's another one, but if you're using a system like that, you need to use the Compass CRM to track those leads and touch base with them and understand the follow up and have, you know, A lead client or A lead leads, B lead leads. And, you know, like A lead leads for me are like people who I feel like are gonna get something done right away. B lead leads are like, it, it's like a month to month type <laughs> situation. It's all about specific, them more timing with stuff. And the, the C leads are like every quarter that I follow up with these people. And then they move different folders. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's using a CRM. Yes, Compass has an incredible CRM, and if you're not using it, you gotta be switching stuff into it. And what I've just learned is these leads that you're getting, if I feel like they're really good leads, I'm throwing them in there because it's starting to help. I didn't realize it helped track that stuff. Um, I might've missed a training or something on it, but you know, it's tracking their activity if they're on uh, these sites, or you know, it's just giving me some real good information, so. Do you, when people leave a review, do you follow up with like a gift card or a note or a call no, or anything? No, my, <laughs> um, my team makes fun of me because I don't really do a ton of gifts to clients. If they're buying properties, I'll, I'll do a gift and it's super simple, but um, referrals, I don't. It's just the way you want to train your clients. If that's how you do it, then do it. Um, I haven't seen any less referrals because I don't send them a Starbucks gift card or a movie ticket. And I know people who do all of that and it's great. They're better agents than me, I guess, <laughs> you know, or their clients love them. I don't know, but I don't think that's a big deal. Like I don't, I don't think people are referring you, um, 
business because you gave them a, a gift card to somewhere because you got that referral. But that's just because of my own business. Um, now, if you've trained clients or your database to, hey, this is what you do, then you better keep doing it. Because um, then they're like, well, being cheap now. <laughs> or business is tough or you know it's it's just how you coach your clients it's um, you know it's it's the expectations you set up for them it's what are you doing um, what are you doing when you have a client and the amount of times they call you a day on the weekends late at night in the mornings you know you can coach your clients to not do certain things so uh, <laughs> My suggestion with clients, past clients, is just call them. <laughs> just call them, email them, but call them consistently every quarter. My past clients are trained. I'll get people texting me and be like, hey, it's been three months, one week. What's what's up? What's going on? Like, you haven't called me to say what's, you know, you still in the business? Like, they'll joke with me about it. So I've trained them to know that, hey, I'm in your life. And I, again, have realized every quarter, a handful of clients have something going on in their life, but you know, something major going on, divorce, new kids, new job, so they gotta move out of state, or they're going moving from South County to North County, or North County to the South Bay, or to East County. Um, you know, they had to move their mother in, so they need to sell their house and buy something that they can build an ADU or has that extra bedroom. So there's every single quarter, I know when I'm calling them, I'm getting referrals. It's just the way it is. Um, it's becoming more predictable now. It took me three years to get my first referral out of my database. So, you know, and every year I probably, early on I was probably putting 15 to 20 people now a, a year. Now I put 35 to 40 in there. Um, last year I put close to 40. This year, um, I've put 31 in there so far. Uh, actually, when I was looking at my transactions before this, I've done 34 transactions, 25 of them have been referrals. So I didn't even have to work hard for those other deals. I would have had a good financial year if I just sat at the beach all day because the referrals would have come in and gave an email once a month and called them every quarter. So I, it's what I could have done. Uh, you know, I don't work that way. I'm always trying to push myself. What could I do? You know, hey, I did this many transactions or I did this much in volume. So it depends on how you track your business. Volumes or transactions, how can I better myself uh, the next year, so. You put a, um, a dollar amount on the clients. Like I've had, I've heard coaches tell you, you know, rate your rate your rate list by how much yeah. volume that person has done with you. Do you do that? So the, I either have an A list or you're not on the list. Okay. <laughs> that that's how I I rate my clients. I uh, mm -hmm. some of them do definitely give me more, and those are typically the ones I'll take to dinner. Yeah. Yeah, or you know, we'll go grab lunch or something. I'm more in contact with those people, so I already know just by seeing their name. I, I think, you know, um, tracking that's a good way to do it. it. It's all about how do you do your business. That's what it's all. If your business is a hundred percent referral, I think there should be some type of tracking. I, I just track the amount of people I go into contact with every day. So, do you have, or did you, when you were developing the habit, you're making a lot of calls, which for some people yeah. is very difficult. Do you have a routine or a prep or something you did to get fired up? Yeah, I, you know, at the time I was on a team, so I was learning the process of how that works. But you really had to be open to the process because it's tough. Early on, calling, I'm gonna tell you, it sucks. It's not fun. Um, so I listened to a lot of motivational speakers. Um, I was always talking to my team lead. Uh, you know, typically I'm on the phones anywhere between 7.45 and 8 o'clock. Sometimes it changes with my son and how his morning's going. So his morning's tough, my morning's tough. Um, how fast I can get him to daycare in the morning. But usually I'm on the phone somewhere around 8 o'clock, but I'm turning on music and 
you're listening to motivational. So I'm listening, waking up. I typically wake up at five in the morning. At that time, when I was working out, I was at, working out at that time. Um, but I still keep the habit of waking up at five in the morning because it's kind of it's my me time before my son and my wife start getting up. Um, like I said, I try to be in the office early first thing in the morning on the phones around 7:45, 8. Latest will be 8:30 if again my son's having a rough morning. Um, you start calling your spirit that time? No, uh, just cold calling. Do people get pissed? Some will, some, but it doesn't matter. If they're not motivated, they, of course they're going to get pissed. Um, but they also get pissed at 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Yeah. Um, but some people, I'm catching them on their drive to work. So it's mm -hmm. the best time to get a hold of them. Um, sometimes when I'm calling around 1 o'clock, they're on their lunch. That's, again, the best time to get a hold of them. Mm -hmm. There is no right or wrong time to do it. If somebody's not motivated to talk to you, even your past clients, because when I'm calling my steer, I don't think about what time it is. I'm just doing it. And I I have some of my past clients that will only pick up at 7.15, 7.30 in the morning. And it's noted in uh, the file. So, let me see it. Oh, it did. Okay. So, I always have notes in it. So, in the Compass CRM, there's notes, hey, the kids and all that, times that I should call them. The dog's name I'm really really bad with names even with they can tell me ten times and I'll still forget their name so I have to write this stuff down sometimes when I'm meeting people at appointments I'll have to write their name on my hand husband and wife because I just don't remember this stuff I, got enough, I feel like I have enough to remember but um, yeah it, it just doesn't matter what time you call just do it and then I'll call up until 11. Typically, I'll have my lunch for 30 minutes. So I treat my, my day as if I'm working an 8 to 5. That's what I do. So I have my lunch, 11 to 11.30. Um, if I have appointments in the afternoon or I'm doing something in the afternoon, I start prepping for that, um, which usually takes me 30 minutes to do that. Follow up with emails. But sometimes when I'm calling, I'm multitasking. I'm looking at emails, trying to keep on top of what's going on. Um, but if I don't have any appointments, I'm calling the rest of the day, you know, till six, seven, sometimes eight o'clock at night. You know, sometimes I have to get home by six so I can put my son down. Um, and then I jump back on the phones at 7.30 at night and just call. So I, you gotta figure out what process in the business you like the most. If it's open houses, you better be doing at least six open houses a month at minimum. If that's how you're prospecting, I mean, that's, you're gonna see success if you're always doing that. Now, if you're doing eight a month, that's even better because it's more chances of you, you know, meeting somebody that could turn into a client. Um, and you better follow up a ton. I mean, a, a ton. Um, you know, I have someone on my team who, she has like the best, um, she has the, I'd say one of the best personalities I've ever met. Um, she's very direct, so it, it's good if you know how to use that. And she, she's really understanding how to use that in perfect moments. That's really helping her. Um, English is her second language. And she's only been calling for eight weeks and she's has, uh, she put a buyer in escrow from cold calling, which you're usually calling for sellers, but she has a habit, she's created a habit to always ask, well, do you have anybody looking to buy or sell real estate, friends, family, type of deal, almost like a Mike Ferry type script. Um, and someone said yes, got them pre-approved on a Thursday, and she was showing them Saturday and Sunday, and she was in escrow, I believe, Monday, Tuesday. And it just wow. happened like that. Next Thursday, I have a listing, she was doing just sold calls, um, on a property we sold in Sarah Mesa. Um, she set up a listing appointment next week that I'm going on with her here in, um, here in Mission Valley, you know, and it's 1-1, one, one, I think 1-2, somewhere around there from a cold call. I mean, she's, you know, she has two other possible listing appointments just from getting out there doing the work. So, which helps create the database, you know, you, you want to put database. My goal had always been 30 people a year in that database. 
because once I hit, if I was getting 10%, which everybody coaches that, that's 30 transactions a year by, for me to send an email once a month, for me to call them every quarter, and it's almost like, hey, I'm creating that retirement plan for later in life, if that's all I gotta do, it's really basic type of stuff, because an email a month takes me 10 minutes to set up. Um, phone calls, when I divide them by 25 days in a, in a month at the end of every quarter, I spend, you know, longest, probably an hour and a half, calling the 10 to 15 clients a day that I have to call. Um, so it's not a lot of time. You know, you're, you're putting in all this work now. We all started somewhere in this business where we had to put in so much work to where later it becomes a lot easier. And, you know, what somebody else is doing in the business transaction and volume wise, don't compare yourself to them. You know, it's kind of one of those random things I want to throw in there because it's everybody's goal is so different with it, with their database. I mean, if your goal is to do 10 transactions a year, own it. And with today's price point, that's over $100,000 in your pocket, you know, for not much transactions in a year. If you're just wanting to do one a month, you're making $150,000 plus a year. You don't need to make $500, a million dollars a year. Now, if you, that's your goal, you can't, uh, can't show up to work at 10 and go home by three. That's just not, it's not going to work out. So. <laughs> how long have you been farming your farm and how, and when did you see your first result from it? Um, I've been doing it four years, four or five years now. It took me two years to get my first transaction. I was spending a lot of money. 5,000 properties is a lot of money going out there. So you just have to trust the process. It's like anything else. You know, if you get into farming, I don't think it should be any less than 2,500. Um, I also think if you're really, if you're trying to really create something with farming, it really shouldn't be any less than 5,000. Um, 2,500 homes is really not a ton, but you also need to know the analytics of that farm. Um, but just because one year the turnover is eight, nine percent, doesn't mean the next year is going to be that. You know, sometimes the best farm is the one that is showing you six, seven percent. Um, usually what I do if I'm farming an area is I actually will pull a huge, if it's a full zip code, I'm pulling the whole zip code to see, you know, what's the common turnover in that zip code. There's some full zip codes where it's four or five percent, so it's probably not the area. But then there's some zip codes overall you know, it's seven, eight percent. So you know overall, even if you took out 2,500 homes, 5,000 homes, whatever it is, there's gonna be turnover. It might not have been that year, but it could be the next year that gives you that good turnover. Um, not everything's so black and white. And how often do you do the 5,000? Every month. Every month. Yeah, so once a month. Um, I know some people do it two times a month, but I'm not trying to it's not just sold or what do you have what's your uh, market updates, just market updates. What, I've, That's great. what I've seen is some people with even just the market updates they think I've sold like 20 homes in the whole zip code when it's you know as long as you have the proper disclaimer and everything on there to, to protect you you know I just kind of roll with the conversation I don't say hey I sold all these homes but they're calling me because they think I sold all these homes um, so I, I do it once a month but that's the I look at it as that's the cherry on top of my business. I don't look at it as that's the main flow of my business. It can definitely be that if I wanted it to be, but that's not how I want to work my business. Um, so yeah, any other questions? What are you saying to your cold calls today, where you're at today compared to what you, not scripting what you used to say, but what do you say today when you're jumping on your calls to do some cold calls? Um, it depends on who I'm talking to. Expires and canceled, if they're newer, you know, most of it's, you know, just trying to be generic is more of like, hey, saw your home just came off the market as an expired listing. Uh, last night, just wondered if you had any interest in still selling your home. You know, oh yeah, I do. Great, you know, is there a good time for me to come over and take a look at it? It is never that easy. Let me just say, it is never that easy. Um, but then it goes into, 
you know, hey, well, if you had sold this home, where are you planning on moving to next? You know, so it's getting to know them. It, that's a Mike Ferry script, but it's coming out a lot different than the robot of, okay, so where are you planning on moving to next? So I, I like to try to throw some of my, I guess, terminology that I have with my friends with them mm -hmm. to try to create that friendship with them over the phone the best I can. Um, you know, hey, your, your home looked like a great home. You know, was there any issues for why your home didn't sell? Um, how'd you choose your last agent? You know, if, if you're gonna interview a new agent, what are you looking for um, with that new agent? And they will tell you on with that one specific question what you need to spend all your time on your listing appointment about. Oh, they sucked at marketing. The pictures were terrible, this, this, and that. Um, so if you're going into the appointment talking about how good and great you are, instead of talking about what you do to market and sell homes, you've lost them. But if you know you go in and you know sometimes I'll ask the question and they're saying, "Hey, I just want somebody to keep me updated and communicate." So I won't even open up the listing presentation book. I'll just give it to them and say, "Hey, this you know this is how I communicate with you. This is how I keep you up to date." You know, and I start prepping them for, especially in a market like today where things are kind of changing, sometimes not for the good, and where, you know, hey, your home's worth this today, but if you wait 30 days from now, it might be worth this. So you need to have those con candid conversations with those people uh, about those types of things, um, which is really helping. Um, me with a lot of the people. You, you got to remember these leads. If they're not serious, you, you got to be able to get rid of them. If, you, if they're not, if you're prepping them for this stuff and they're not receptive to it, they're probably not motivated to buy or sell real estate. Um, which kind of goes back to they're never going to be in your CRM, so you're never going to be able to send that email and you know talk to them every quarter. Uh, so you got to spend time with the right people uh, day in and day out. So. Yeah.